Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today I want to talk about caliber choice, stopping power, and shot placement. You know, each one of these topics honestly could be their own video, and that's because there's so many variables entailed in each one of these topics. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and condense it down into one single short video just to help those people that are maybe new to firearms because there's a lot of people buying their first guns out there. A lot of people that are buying their first pistol, they want to maybe consider CCW or home defense. Uh, something happened in their neighborhood and they've decided, you know what, I'm going to take my life into my own hands, my own personal security into my own hands, and I'm not going to rely on somebody else to show up 5, 10, 15, or 20 minutes later when things could potentially be over and probably will be over okay so these people have decided to take that responsibility upon themselves to be their own first responders and you have to commend them for that but they're also going to run into a lot of acronyms a lot of terminology a lot of things that just are going to be completely foreign to them and so I am kind of making this video for those people okay so if you know exactly what I'm talking about already this isn't really for you this is kind of a 101 and if you want me to make another video where I kind of focus on each one of the categories more in detail just go ahead and let me know in the comment section I can always do that Now we're going to start off with the caliber debate. You're going to hear a lot of debate online about which caliber is better for your own personal defense. Some people are going to say that they carry a 45 because they don't make a 46. You're going to hear some people say that they carry a 9mm and they carry a 9mm because you get four, five, six more rounds, seven more rounds in the magazine, and having more rounds is gonna be better. You're gonna hear some people say that they like a 40 because it feels like a more powerful round, and uh, you'll hear also people say that they like a 380 because it's more compact. A lot of the pistols, they're easy to carry, and you're gonna hear a lot of that stuff, and you're gonna wonder to yourself, well, which one should I pick? Well, which one you should pick actually kind of depends on the next two categories. Stopping power, which some people actually say is a myth, I say not, and then there is also shot placement. When you hear stopping power and shot placement, usually that um, kind of coincides with what caliber you decide to go with, okay? And there's a reason for that. Now, when we talk about stopping power, we talk about the power that it takes in order to stop your threat. So you have a threat that's coming at you, and you've decided at this point that you have to use deadly force, okay? Deadly force is anytime you pull your weapon and you point it, you pull that trigger, Okay, even if you're not intending to kill the person, maybe you're somebody who says, I'd just rather shoot him in the leg, which by the way, I do not recommend. Always go for the good shot. But if you're somebody who's not intending, it's still deadly force and still considered deadly force. So keep that in mind. You own that bullet the second that it leaves the barrel. You are responsible for it. So make sure that you are a responsible person and you think before you do these things. But still, stopping power, okay? The ability to stop that threat. So somebody's coming at you. They are a deadly threat. You've determined that. You pull your firearm. You take the shot and you want to be able to stop that threat before it can get to you, before it can hurt you, before it can kill you, your friends, your family, or whoever you're defending, okay? That is what I consider stopping power, but there's a certain calculation that goes into why that has the power to stop. Again, leading back to caliber. Caliber is a very important part of this and we'll get to it in just a second, but after I go over these other two, which are, you know, again, determining factors. Now you'll hear about shot placement, okay? So again, we've determined that stopping power is the ability to stop the threat from coming towards you, okay? How fast can you stop that threat? Now we talk about shot placement. Shot placement to me is more important than caliber or stopping power. Because if you have a great caliber, whatever caliber you've determined to be the best caliber for you, and you believe that that has the ability to stop a threat quickly, if you do not have proper uh, uh, shot placement, you will not stop that target, and that target still has the potential to hurt you. If you shoot somebody and you do not hit them in a good spot, a good area that is going to immediately lower their blood pressure or their ability to move and fight you, then you know what? It doesn't matter what caliber you shot them with. For instance, okay, this is what's very important. When you talk about body armor, body armor covers your vitals, okay? It covers your vitals, your heart, and your lungs, okay, which are also protected by your sternum, okay, and again, this is where a lot of that uh, stopping power comes into play, the ability to break the sternum and hit some of those vital organs or break bone uh, is, is part of stopping power, but when you're talking about shot placement, you're talking about here, in the vital organs, or in the T-zone in the head, you know, your sinus cavity, and then this area directly in here, okay, so you have these different areas that you can hit somebody that will ensure that they will go down, okay? These are areas that cause immediate damage to the cardiovascular system and to the nervous system and cause somebody to stop, okay? And a lot of the times these are going to be fatal wounds. So here's the thing, 
If you shoot somebody in the arm with a 45 and you don't hit a major artery or something like that, okay, the ability of them to still attack you with their offhand, their other hand, their power hand, the ability for them to still run at you is still positive because they might not even know their shot until they actually get to you and at least start stabbing you with the knife or whatever it is that they're trying to, to, to get to you with. Okay, so again, shot placement is important. It doesn't matter if you shoot them in the arm with a 45, a 9mm, a 38, or a 22. It doesn't matter. If you shoot them in the leg and you, again, do not hit a vital organ they may not even notice that they've been shot before they're still coming at you or they draw their weapon and they fire back they still have the ability to hurt you you have to hit one of these vital organs the heart the lungs the brain the spinal column all of these things that are located right here and right here that's why shot placement matters more okay than stopping power because to me that is stopping power okay so shot placement now you have a better understanding of what shot placement is and why shot placement is so important now we're going to go ahead and transition back now to uh, stopping power this is again directly tied into the caliber debate and i'll get back to that in a second remember we started off with caliber and now we're going to move on to these explain again ending at caliber why that's so important okay so now we're talking about back to stopping power you know why shot placement is so important but now why is stopping power important stopping power to me is the ability to break through the hardened surfaces of the body and still create enough damage to stop that threat for instance if you pull a pistol on somebody let's say you have a 22 a 22 short 22 long rifle and a pistol there's really not that much energy in that while yes you can definitely still kill somebody with a 22 and that's been proven over the years uh, especially with the way that the bullet reacts in the body there is not a lot of power to break very thick parts like the sternum okay your sternum is extremely thick it's intended to protect your heart from things like that your skull is extremely thick it is intended to take abuse and force and that's why they're located in the front of your body and that's why they cover these things so to me stopping power in a caliber means that it can penetrate those hardened surfaces and still create enough damage after that to stop those vital organs, to lower somebody's blood pressure, to stop them from breathing, to stop their heart beating fast enough where they're not gonna be able to react and still kill you. Because the, again, we're using deadly force because somebody has applied some type of deadly threat to you. So remember that, okay? You've applied that deadly force because you're in fear of your life. So you wanna be able to stop that threat, sternum, right? Head, you wanna stop that threat. Okay, you don't shoot for the legs, you don't shoot for the arm, and there's a reason for that. You could still end up dead yourself, and you don't want that. So you want a caliber that still has the ability to penetrate those very, very hard surfaces and still do enough damage to those vital organs, okay? That's where caliber comes into play. A lot of people say that they won't go below nine millimeter. They won't go to a 38 or something like that. Okay, and we're talking about, I'm talking about semi-automatic firearms, not talking about revolver caliber firearms. There's a reason for that. That is a complete another video for me. But so we're talking about um, semi-automatic pistol cal calibers. Okay, so 38, talking about nine millimeter, 40, 45, 10 millimeter, and things of that nature. So 38 for me would be the lowest, and there's a reason for that. I believe that the 38 is still capable of cracking somebody's ribs and hitting their vital organs. While that might not have enough power to really create as much damage after it passes through bone, it's still an effective tool, even in short barreled pistols. So people can use that. It's not the best, but it's definitely what I would consider to be the minimum of somebody who's going to be considering carrying. Okay, so 38, stopping power and shot placement combined give you a win, okay? Now we're talking about moving up to a nine millimeter. Nine millimeter is a very popular round, and there's a reason for that. You're talking about a lot of ammunition. You're talking about a great caliber with high velocity. High velocity equals penetration, okay, through hard surfaces. And you're talking about, uh, a, a, again, a caliber that is, I think, in the right dimensions, in the right weight to be able to still break that area and create enough damage to the vital organs where if, let's say, you miss okay with a nine millimeter you're still hitting maybe over here or in the arm you still have enough ammunition to continue to fire so if you're not that great of a shot you're shooting on the move you're you're breathing really heavy or something like that yeah it, it does come down to how many rounds you have because we're not going to be all the best shot in a defensive scenario then you take the 40 okay which i do not like i'm not a fan of 40. 40 will definitely have enough power to break that sternum and hit vital organs and it has what I would call stopping power. But again, shot placement is gonna be more important than stopping power. But the 40 does have that power to penetrate and do a lot of damage, okay? But you lose rounds and 40 is extremely heavy on the recoil. So follow-up shots are gonna be less. 
less ca uh, less capacity and things of that nature. So with the 38, you have high capacity, nine millimeter, high capacity, nine millimeters, kind of a good, you know, middle area. Then you have the 40, a lot of recoil, good stopping power, good penetration. And again, with shot placement, you're gonna end up, you know, taking your target out, hopefully before he does any damage to you. 45, 45 is a very heavy round. It's very slow. The recoil is actually manageable on a 45. People think because it's heavier than a 40, uh, or in, you know, in diameter, it's bigger than a 40, that it's actually gonna have more recoil. I've noticed that to be really not the case. Uh, I noticed that they're very similar in recoil, but 45 is a little bit less snappy than a 40. Okay, so follow-up shots are gonna be a little bit better, but again, you're talking about less ammunition capacity. Does 45 have stopping power? Yes, because a big 45 caliber slug can penetrate that sternum, it can penetrate the head, and it's gonna do a crap ton of damage when it hits vital organs. So 45 is a great defensive caliber. It's, it hits hard, it penetrates good, it expands if you're using proper ammunition, defensive ammunition, it makes a big old hole, and if you hit with proper shot placement, then yes, it's going to stop your target. Remember, most people don't actually die from being shot. There's a lot of people out there who just feel that they've been shot and so that their body actually gives up. But if you look up a lot of research, you'll notice that people don't actually die as often as you might think from getting a shot with pistol. So shot placement is extremely important. So you have 45, okay? And then there's other you know, calibers. There's 10 millimeter and different things like that. But what I would focus on, if you're talking about concealed carry or home defense, would be those three most common calibers. Um, so that's something to, to consider. Now, when it comes to your size, your frame, uh, if you're a smaller person, 38 or nine millimeter might be what's good for you because the recoil is low, it's manageable, it's easy, the ammunition is lightweight, the guns for them are usually a little bit smaller, they're a little bit thinner, so concealed carry, things like that. Home defense, bigger guns are fine for home defense because you're not carrying it around all day. So you can do a 40, you can do a 45, you can do a 10 millimeter if you want to. You can do a 357 Magnum or 357 SIG or whatever caliber you choose because it doesn't matter, you're not gonna carry it around all day. Those are things to consider. But remember, when you're talking about new shooters, okay, there are those three things to consider. You have caliber, but that ties into shot placement and that ties into the ability to stop your threat by breaking open uh, you know, some of these areas that are more heavily protected. Okay, that's again why armor protects you right here is because it's not a deadly, a deadly enough threat to get hit in your arms or other areas. It, it might stop you, but it's not going to uh, effectively disable you if you're hit in this area with body armor. The body armor is going to protect your vital organs. So things to consider for new gun owners. I know it's a lot of information and again, I'm just breaking it down in a very simple fashion so that you can understand why each one of these things affects the other. I am not necessarily a professional. I am just somebody who's been shooting a long time. I do a lot of research. I observe, I listen, and I take opinions and facts from multiple different sources, which is what you should do. Do not consider this one particular source. What I am doing is giving you my particular opinion and my take on defensive scenarios regarding caliber choice, stopping power, and again, shot placement. So what I suggest you do is get training. You buy your first pistol, you go out, you get trained by a professional who can teach you professionally how to professionally handle yourself in a situation that might you know, be a threat to your life. So. Anyway, I know this is kind of a long-winded video, but I feel that it's very important for all those new gun owners there to understand a lot of these things that are going on. Again, I think it basically boils down to, uh, to training. Training, learn as much as you can. Really absorb yourself in it when it involves your life, when it involves your family's life, and potentially your own life if you end up in jail from doing something stupid or doing something wrong. Remember, every bullet counts. If you don't hit the person you're shooting at and you hit the, the little kid behind him, that's still on you. Okay, that's where professional training comes in. That's where professional training helps. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.